what are the symptoms and what, from your view, from your studies, what exactly is Morgellons disease? Um, my uh, view of Morgellons is basically the result of industrialization. Be the list of symptoms is extremely long. It's almost similar to like a fungal and a fungal overload, pathogenic overload. And there's so many related uh, symptoms. Uh, the key, some of the more prominent ones being the body actually growing these fibrils or hairs, uh, the body producing artifacts of some kind, uh, that whether they're uh, some people, I've even met a couple of people that are producing plant-like material growing out of their skin. Um, there's actually these uh, non-earthling type of insects being uh, come out of their body. I mean, unbelievable stories that I would never have believed it unless I was standing in their, in, in their house witnessing this. Uh, hexagons, I mean, on our website, uh, Margellan's Research Group, Dot com. There's probably a thousand pictures that you you can see. The, the, they're they're just they're real. It's unbelievable. It's like the science fiction channel um, come to life. Absolutely, I agree with you. You know as well. But there are many components to this. Now, why do you think? Uh, well, why, why do you think that this is such a big cover-up? I mean, the, the Morgellons was reported 20-some-odd years ago. Um, according to do, uh, Dr. Caroline Carter, she says it shouldn't even be called Morgellons disease. It should be called GMOD, which would stand for Genetically Modified Organism Disease. What do you have to say about that? I am totally aligned with that. You are? Well... Yeah. She is testing with, via hair samples. She's testing in the country of Cyprus. Eight out of ten people, and doesn't matter the age group, by the way, little children all the way up to the elderly, eight out of ten are testing positive for Morgellons disease. What's going on? Uh, what's going on? That's a, <laughs> that's a good question because um, actually there's a lot of uh, patented uh, data um, and that I have found that people uh, uh, like to share when they find uh, un or declassified information that used to be classified. Uh, I have a uh, report from 2004 that talked about the nano and micro technologies of um, unmanned, basically smart dust, which are microscop smaller than microscopical particles that some of the components of that smart dust are showing up in people's body coming out through these little black specks and, and showing up in some of the fibers and so you tell me what's going on i think it's madness but the body is responding by trying to push the stuff out through the skin or whatever and it's, it's affecting our genetic expression it's affecting people's health and it's horrifying especially when you have this but silver iodide and dry ice nuclei are Stone Age technologies compared to today's higher tech particle payloads. The most amazing of these belong to a family of weather mod devices that are so small you might not see one, even if it was floating in your eye. Ranging from the ultra tiny to the nearly invisible, these are the revolutionary micro machines that will be the workhorses of any world weather control system. They're MEMS. Micro electromechanical sensors. It's January 7th on a Friday in Phoenix, and our skies are pretty blue today. Just a few weird looking cloud type things in the sky. So I thought I'd check for the particulates and fibers that might possibly be raining out of the sky after two days of. A whiteout situation. We were chemtrailed to the high heavens the last few days. And I see things floating through the air everywhere. And we're out breathing them, thinking it's a clear blue day and the air is clean. There's all these things flying through the air. It's not raining out, 
but there is stuff in my pool. And there is no raindrops hitting the flagstone around the pool. Nothing. There is no raindrops on the ground, but there are raindrops in the pool. What? And there's shiny raindrops. And I'm on the telephone, so I'm sorry, but I had to get a picture of this. Okay guys, this is a weather report because uh, it's been like 80 degrees here, really unseasonably warm. <clears throat> I'm out, I mean, I'm at 8,000 feet in the Colorado Rocky Mountains and um, I've been noticing weird snow when we do have a little and this stuff takes the cake right now. <laughs> I mean, it's like snow fiber. Look at this crap. I and mean, you can see it, it's, I mean, this is how it's falling. It's, it's not like freezing once it hits the ground. It's falling like this. There's no snowflakes, they're like snow fibers or crystals or whatever. But they're not like, there's a couple of snowflakes I can see. I mean, you can see a couple maybe. But most of this crap is this fiberish looking, disturbing stuff. And, uh... Yeah, it's bizarre. Doesn't look right to me, personally. So here's outside a little. You can see it's in this whole crap. It's made of that. It's, yeah. I can see it falling on my shirt this way. Look. You can see it before it dissolves. It's lines. There's lines. There's fiber, snow falling on me. Look at my shirt here. See that? What the hell, guys? I've never seen fibers falling out of the sky or snow that looks like fiber. It's really disturbing. Anyway, this is what it looks like here. We're getting fiber snow, and it's really just a haze in the air that looks, you know, that comes down as snow. So, uh, can't see a thing. Hope everybody's doing okay. It's 29 degrees here, and uh, yeah, it's the first day we've had snow in a long time. Um, I could definitely feel <laughs> it's very, very difficult for somebody who doesn't suffer from my guns, but uh, a constant flow of, of electricity going through my body. It's like, uh, I mean, this is, uh, I can. This is uh, basically um, Magellan's, at least in part, is a, an invasion of human tissues by nanotechnology. And I can feel these wires under my skin. I can feel the pulsation energy, or let's say the electricity going through. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I react very strongly to any electromagnetic uh, uh, yeah, uh, frequency or. So I can relate to what Marie said that she, she, well, she feels that when she's near to a refrigerator or any kind of electric uh, device uh, regarding the. Uh... The thing I really want people to hear, and I didn't have scientific validation until recently, that what I believe to be true uh, is in fact true, and that is Morgellons is not a disease. That is the great red herring that they've asked us all to swallow, that there's this disease out there and there's a segment of the population uh, involved, but that most everybody else is good to go. And that's certainly not true. And when I wrote my paper for Arizona Sky Skywatch in 09, I tried to get that point across by calling it a syndrome. And the reason I say that it's not a disease, that's not to mean that people aren't suffering. And that's not to mean that these things aren't happening. Of course they are. But the reason I say it's not a disease, because we think of a disease as a pathogen that gets into its measles, mumps, whatever, a single pathogen that is classified as a disease with a certain amount of symptomology to it, and that's that. And that's not what we're seeing here at all. We're seeing multiple materials in the human body that work symbiotically together, synergistically, 
that are being delivered to us through the air supply. Um, and when the body recognizes, and it's strong enough, mind, body, and spirit, to say this doesn't belong, it begins to try to push it out. Now that's all these fibers, these pseudo-life forms, which is a really better, much more accurate description than fiber. These heavy metals, these crystalline polymers, this fungus, all of these things that work together, they don't belong in our bodies. And the bodies have the wisdom and the strength, and may I say the spirit, to shove it out. Very painful, very unsightful, unsightly, very difficult process. And so my goal, once I sort of clicked on to, that's what was happening, of course, with the help of many. Brilliant. I'm just a dot connector, really. Um, but I work with, I call the above ground underground, a lot of very brilliant minds in the scientific, in the, in the research community, uh, microbiologists, hematologists, uh, you know, all these wonderful people um, who share with me what they know and understand, physicists and all, all kinds of folks. So when I began to see that there was a match between what was coming out of these sores and what was being delivered through the air, and then I have a research doctor who has access to an atomic microscope who was able to observe live blood, you know, on a very, 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 very small scale and could see that this fungus was actually collecting these toxic metals, which we know, aluminum, barium, and the whole nine yards that are being delivered to us as well, uh, and using them as weapons against our immune system. Big bells went off for me, and I began to realize that this was a very hate to give it over, brilliant system that was being laid into our bodies uh, piecemeal. And I'm not sure where it all started. I don't believe it just started with the chemtrails. I believe you can follow it all the way back to some inoculations post-World War II and a lot of other things, food. Um, but be that as it may, it's not a disease, guys. Hey, that, that's great. Uh too. Is there a connection between Morgellons disease and chemtrails? Dr. Will Spencer, I'll let you, you take that one. I would say there is because the, uh, the uh, some of the components that we're finding, the artifacts coming out of people's bodies, are being detected in the air. So, um, and the, uh, at pretty high altitudes actually, and so that would lead me to believe there is a connection as well as not only the components, uh, the, the fibers and the, so, and the metals that are coming out of people's bodies are in people's bodies, uh, but also the, uh, these uh, exotic or new lab-created microorganisms, uh, genetically altered ones, are showing up in people's bodies as well as in the atmosphere. So, uh, you know, it would only believe, lead me to believe that there is a direct connection. Right. 